Welcome back to the Sustainable Podcast. My name is Kossi. Welcome back to a brand new video. We are doing the combined 11 Arsenal Manchester United and we are only going with fit players. So if a player is injured, if a player is out of action, we are not going to select them for this one. Only players that could be fit to play for Man United and Arsenal today. I want your thoughts. I want your opinions. How many Manchester United players would get into this current Arsenal side? I think Man United have done well in terms of squad building. They've been quite uh, on point. I think Eric Tenag is doing a very good job when it comes to recruit, uh, recruitment. The likes of Rasmus Olin, the likes of Casemiro, the likes of uh, uh, Sofian Amrabat I like as well. And Arsenal, the last three, four years, all we have done is improve our squad. You cannot believe that among all the Ascent Vega signings uh, that were at the side in 2020-2019, we only have one player, and that is Mohamed Elneny. And he doesn't play uh, for Arsenal. So it shows how far the squad has come. Mikel Arteta has cleaned out all the signings of Unai Emery's, cleaned out all the signings of, uh, uh, of Arsene Wenger as well, with Kieran Tierney, with players even as good as Kieran Tierney, out of the side. So how many Man United players would get into this Arsenal side? We were very close to winning the title last campaign. They were close to us they were close to you know a second they were in third and i think the gap between these two teams might not be that huge so i might have five Manchester united players and around six or maybe seven arsenal players and around four man united players in this one so let's start off with the goalkeepers right away and uh uh, look, we have a couple of options here. I don't think Man United have a good second goalkeeper, but Andre Onana is definitely worth a shout out. Uh, David Dreyer is another one we could talk about, and of course, Ramsdale uh, is Arsenal's number one. Why I'm not going to go with David Dreyer is I don't think he will play in this game. I don't think he's um, a number one uh, as compared to Onana and Ramsdale. I think he's, he's, he's definitely become a number two at Arsenal by signing in the summer. And between Ramsdale and Andre Onana, I'm going to go with Andre Onana simply because I think both goalkeepers are really highly rated given their ball playing abilities. And who is the better ball player? It is Andre Onana. I don't think there is a, um, a team that has gone, well, let's go with Ar for Aaron Ramsdale because he's so good and he's very, very much better than Jordan Pickford or, or anything like that. It's actually because he's got that ability to play out from the back. He's a super goalkeeper and, you know, he allows the team that comfort to play out from the back. It's the same with Andre Onana, but with uh, with Andre Onana, if you're looking for the prime example of a modern goalkeeper, if you're looking for for the prime example of a goalkeeper that is so comfortable with his feet and can be uncomfortable as well, um, actually can be comfortable in comfortable uh, in uncomfortable situations, that is Andre Onana. So let's go with Andre Onana. Arsenal fans, do not actually be angry. Um, it's one that I think we will agree on, right? And, of course, Arsenal as well wanted Andre Onana initially uh, before we signed Aaron Ramsdale. It shows you he's ahead of Ramsdale experience-wise. Uh, he's already done well ever since coming to the Premier League. Uh, I like him. I really, really do. But, of course, I do like Ramsdale as well. Okay. Let's go to right back. Let's go to right back. Now... Arsenal's right-back option this campaign has been Thomas Partey. Last campaign, Benjamin White. Uh, we have Tomias as well there, but I, I'm going to go with Ben White. I think Ben White is going to be uh, the right-back we use for the remainder of the campaign. They have one Bissaka, Man United. They have, uh, you know, Diego Dalot as well. I I'm going to be forced to go with Bissaka because he's... Um, He's more of the complete fullback of those three. Ben White, I like. I think last campaign, he had a very, very good season. Like, very good season. But my problem with Ben is, however much you play him there, it's the same thing with John Stones. However much you play them in that position, they don't give you what a player like Bissaka would give you. Of course, Bissaka going forward is a nuisance. He's a complete idiot when it comes to uh, the final third. So you get, you're get you going to get nothing from him. But what I like about him is those 1v1 situations. If there is a player that you can trust when it comes to uh, 1v1 situations, it is Aaron Van Bissaka. He's going to be a very key player for, for Man United uh, you know, this evening. 
to stop Martinelli, to stop Leandro Trossard, and to stop uh, whoever's going to play on the left-hand side. Actually, if I'm Mikel Arteta, I don't even play Martinelli because Martinelli wants to go 1v1 with players like, you know, Bissaka. You cannot beat him in 1v1 situations, right? So you would rather play a player like Trossard who's intelligent enough to come inside, cut inside, um, and use his right foot a little bit even better, okay? Uh, so I've gone with Aaron Van Bissaka at right back. I think he's the much better right back as compared to White, Pate, um, and Diego Dalot. At left back, I'm going to go with um, Alexander Zichenko. Um, I, I said I'm going to go with only fit players, so I don't think Manchester United have a fit player, you know, to to, to rival Zichenko at left back. Luke Shaw is um, an all-round fullback. Is an all-round uh, you know, an all-round defender, an all-round uh, fullback. Plays very very well when it comes to his day. At times when it's not his day, you, you don't want to see his performances. But with Alexander Zichenko being fit, and um, I think Man United have Sergio Regulan uh, right there. But I don't think Regulan is to the levels of Alexander Zichenko. Regulan has failed to, f to, to actually nail down a position at Tottenham Hotspur and Atletico Madrid um, in each of his last two uh, recent clubs. So for me, Alexander Zichenko at left back, it is a no-brainer and, and he becomes the Arsenal player, the first Arsenal player in this team. Uh, at centre back, first I'm going to go with William Saliba. It's a no-brainer. Uh, top three centre back in the Premier League. Everyone will agree with me. I think with um with Saliba, Arsenal have a consistent well-performing centre-back. I think that is what Man United don't have at the moment. Lisandro Martinez is good, but he has his deficiencies, and those deficiencies are the reason why time in, time out, he actually struggles. Um, Rafa Veran is um, a decent centre-back, but he always picks up those injuries and he's never fit. Like, you don't want to have a player like that. He's never fit, he's always injured, um, and as we speak, for this game, He's actually going to be out as well. So I've gone with uh, William Saliba. And controversially, I'm going to bring back Gabriel Magales in this uh, centre-back pairing uh, in the combined 11. So I'm going, to I'm, I'm going to bring back Gabriel Magales. And this is the reason why I bring back Gabi over Lisandro Martinez. So Lisandro Martinez I like a lot. He's, um, he's aggressive. He's very decisive. And if you have him in your side... You can be rest assured you have a centre back that um, can bully defenders. But my problem with Rizandro is he's reckless. He's reckless as a player, and his deficiencies are starting to show every single time in the Premier League. When he had just come in, we all thought he was this kind of um, invisible, this kind of um, energy power. But now, uh, after Salah destroying him last campaign, we have seen a couple of few poor games from him, right? Kuliseski in the Tottenham game almost done him. Um, I think he was very, very poor in that game. Again, he was poor in the Nottingham Forest game. So slowly but surely, we are getting to see the poor side and the weak side of Lisandro Martinez. And again, he's going to be a key player for Man United without Rafa Varane this evening. Now, in midfield, this, is, this should be a no-brainer, by the way. In midfield, it should be a no-brainer. Rice um, over, over Thomas Partey. I'm not going to play Rice and, 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 and Casemiro in the same team. I've gone with Declan Rice. And why I've gone with Declan Rice in this one, um, the start of the season for Casemiro has been a little bit uninspiring and you know, demotivating. And if, if, if you're Casemiro or if you're Man United fan and you look at how Casemiro has actually played in this, uh, you know, in these three games of the opening campaign, you should be worried. You've got to be uh, absolutely worried. Why? Um, I, I don't think Casemiro has given us the best of, of himself, right? It's not the Casemiro we saw last campaign, the Casemiro breaking up play, the Casemiro, uh, you know, riding the midfield. Yeah, it could be the fact that he's been left isolated uh, th by the introduction of a player like uh, Mason Mount. But then also, is he losing the legs, right? 
is he losing the legs is the premier league becoming uh, a little bit tougher for him and is it eventually catching up with him on the right hand side of this midfield will be martin odegaard um with Ode, he's got to improve his game this campaign as well if we had a, an, a better option i'll drop him right i'll drop him for this com for the, for this for, for this combined 11 but we don't have a much better option and he's um one of the most creative players actually in this side in this arsenal side and he was the most uh, he scored the most goals for of, for a midfielder last campaign in the premier league so should he continue to do that he's going to be a key player for arsenal no doubt this campaign okay um to complete this midfield is christian erickson I think people actually forget how important Ericsson is to Man United, but also people forget how good Ericsson is and how he has been throughout his career at Tottenham and Man United, uh, where at Inter Milan, wherever he's gone, he has been an absolute gem of a player. And the fact that he plays with um, that kind of heart condition, it's phenomenal. It's purely phenomenal. So I'd love to have Christian Eriksen as my box to box. I'd love to have uh, Odegaard as my 10. And I'd love to have Declan Rice as my defensive midfielder. Why I've not gone with Bruno Fernandes? Um, he's a captain, just like Odegaard. And I don't think they, act, they, they necessarily uh, cannot play together. Why I've gone with um, uh, without Bruno? It's that an inspiring character when the team is going down it's that an inspiring character when the team is is losing is on the losing end he simply just can't um you know handle uh, a, a losing team a losing side and with martin odegaard what we have seen is he will lift up the arsenal spirit. he will lift up this arsenal team when we are down that is one thing that by the way we have uh in all day okay on the left is marcus rashford okay uh let's agree on this one because we might be tempted to go into the debate, but it's Marcus Rashford. Uh, why I like Rashford over Trossard and over Martinelli, it is pace. His pace and his, um, you know, speed is unmatched. Like, he's one of the quickest players in the Premier League. Martinelli is very quick, like lightning quick. But I like Rashford's pace, and I would take Rashford every single day um over any of the left wingers we have at the club my problem with marcus rashford is as, as a striker as a forward why aren't you getting the numbers that you are supposed to be getting he misses a lot of chances uh he's one of those players that you know at times just disappoint you but marcus rashford has got the ability to be on the ballon d'Or podium someday if he can continue um the good run he had last campaign and just be consistent like good last campaign very poor this campaign right you know what actually differentiates him from saka saka has laws as well right and his laws are also low but on his law saka has an impact in the team on his law marcus rashford does not have an impact on the team that is my problem with marcus okay right wing then it is bukayo saka uh the star boy both of them actually affected the games uh last campaign but saka's cracker uh was unbeatable with bukayo saka over anthony it's a no debate right you know you could debate rashford over trossard you could debate rashford over uh matt nelly and there is um there is a valid point because matt nelly had a full good season rashford had a half good season right but I still go with Rashford. With Saka, um, Anthony, Jaden Sancho. Um, I just don't understand how Man United are scouting players on the right hand side. I, I just don't understand because you've spent 80 plus million on Sancho, didn't work out. You tried to play him on the left and as a center forward, by the way, as well, just to make sure that the money comes out. Then you've signed 100 million, Anthony. That is not working. Probably try the academy. At this, uh, at, uh, at center forward, at center forward, I, I'll try. Uh, if I were honest, I would say none. I don't think Gabriel Jesus is um, a center forward I'm proud of. I don't think Edin Ketia is a center forward I'm proud of, but I'm not proud of either of the Manchester United center forwards. Like, Anthony Martial, 
Rasmus Solan. I've not seen my Rasmus Solan. I've not seen Rasmus Solan. Um, but he's not done it anywhere to prove that he's going to be uh, the next Vlahovic for the Premier League, the next Arling Haaland, okay? Uh, but the profile of ha Holland and the profile of Gabriel Jesus are kind of very similar. But then I'll have to go with Gabriel Jesus because he's done it in the Premier League. He's, he's done it on the big stage. And he's won some important silverware uh, for, uh, you know, with, with, with this kind of system. That's the only reason why I would go with um, Gabriel Jesus. So there you have it. I've gone with two players uh, for Man United in defense. Actually, Onana and Bisaka. I've gone with two. One in midfield, one up top. So four Man United players. And I don't think I'm being a little bit harsh here. If you look at these two teams and you compare them player per player, quality, uh, quality wise, I think Arsenal are a little bit ahead of um uh ahead of Man United. But eventually, I think United will will get there. I think they will get there. If you add Sofian Amra back to that team, you add um a decent centre back. You add a decent right back. You add a decent left back. You add um, a decent right wing up. United will get there in time. But this season, it could be a long season for them. Right? Unless the Glazers sell and they get a good January transfer window, Man United, it doesn't look very, very good. That is my combined 11. You can watch other combined 11s and share your thoughts as well uh, um, You know, on this video.